Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. Uh, I want to talk about something that's been in this, um, in the ether, in, in the uh, world of organized crime the last couple of weeks. Uh, there was a video and then some follow-up videos um, in August that were discussing paperwork that has come out on a deceased, very popular, prominent member of the Genovese crime family, Angelo Prisco, a.k.a. The Horn. Uh, Prisco was the capo of the West Side's New Jersey rackets, died in prison doing a life sentence for murder. And OC Shorts, which we're a big fan of here at uh, OG Pod, um, found found some paperwork. Um, some people took that paperwork and started to kind of do their own thing with it on their platforms. And uh, I, I think that I, I just need to step in here and contextualize, um, which is what we do here at the OG Pod. Um, we're about news and analysis. We're not about drama. And I want to be very clear. I've, I've gone through this stuff. I've gone through the 302s that that um, that are being you know shown around. You know, talk to people that are in the government um, that know the details behind this. And it just there's a slippery slope. Uh, people immediately. Well, let me first start off by saying that Angela Prisco was not a rat. Angelo Prisco was not a cooperator. Angelo Prisco was everything that people think Angelo Prisco was. The guy was an OG. Guy was, you know, to use Jerry Capace's term, with dyed in wool gangster, former purple ganger, New York purple ganger. Uh, his dad had a button in the Genovese before he, before he did. Uh, Angelo Prisco was a guy that had a lot of presence and someone that, People, you know, it was one of those guys that checks a lot of those boxes that we talk about, which is why I think they're, you know, loved, feared, respected, an earner, a hitter. Um, and the reputation is kind of being besmirched this this last, last month. And it reminds me of what happened a year or two ago with Jimmy I in Chicago, where there were 302s that came out that were all out of context. I... I People should not assume that a 302 necessarily means cooperation. Yes, if you're a cooperator, there's going to be 302s on you. But the protocol with 302s is a lot of times up for interpretation, frankly. And it depends on who's running which office, uh, which office of, of uh, FBI, DEA, ATF, um, what those ASACs want in their 302s. There was different protocol for 302s back in the 60s and 70s that there are now. But a 302 can be drafted based on any type of conversation. Um, it doesn't and isn't always a cooperation conversation. And in this case, Angelo Prisco, when he was in prison, took about a you know, 15 to, to 25 minute meeting with the FBI who had come to try to shake the trees. Now, if he should have sat with them at all, you know, according to the letter of the law, LCN Omerta, he shouldn't have. But I think if you understood, again, if you understood the context here where these guys are, are, are being tracked 24 seven by feds, um, Sometimes you just build rapport and sometimes having a conversation is just a conversation. It's not a cooperation. So in this case, a 302 was put together because Prisco um, attended a meeting. He was, from what I can understand, he didn't know the feds were going to be there. And this is, you know, this again, this is par for the course, uh, gets called to a, um, a meeting from, from his uh, prison cell and, you know, the feds are sitting in front of him. And instead of getting up and walking out immediately, 
he sat there and uh, didn't give them any information of substance, uh, of real substance, but engaged them for, for a period of time. And um, I mean, guys in a prison cell 23 hours a day, uh, having a, a 10, 20 minute conversation when you're not giving up any information, you're just kind of playing um, shadow boxing, I guess, uh, trying to sum up your enemy kind of both sides of this. And the guy didn't cooperate. Um, maybe we could sit here and we could talk about he shouldn't have sat with FBI agents uh, in any capacity. Uh, that's, you know, I, I can, you know, that's an argument that I, I understand. But for people that really don't know anything, and I'm not saying this is OC shorts, but for people that don't really know anything, to sit there on their platforms and speculate uh, and and conflate and throw shade at Angelo Prisco, who doesn't deserve to have shade thrown at him, frankly. Um, I just wanted to correct the record and uh, just explain that not everything is is you know that meets the eye here. And and a lot of times the government wants these three hundred twos out there that don't in any way. Um, acknowledge cooperation, they acknowledge a conversation, but they want these things out there to ruffle feathers. And in situations, frankly, like Al Bruno in Springfield, they wanted that out there to get him killed. Um, so this, you know, this came that this comes out six, seven years after Prisco died in prison. And then just like, you know, this is the final thing I'll say, just like with Jimmy I in Chicago, and, and, and Prisco in this situation. What's if you're cooperating in theory, you're receiving some benefit you wouldn't get if you didn't do that. Jimmy, I did 20 years in prison after this alleged cooperation that the feds, you know, coincidentally put in front of uh, ABC Chicago on the day of his wet uh, on the day of his wake. In this situation, Angelo Prisco died in prison doing a life sentence. If he was a rat or if he was a cooperator, he would have died at home around, surrounded by his family. So I just don't want to get it twisted and uh, have people out there calling Angelo Prisco a rat when the guy was as far from a rat as possible. And I just wanted to contextualize that. OG Pod, Scott Bernstein, I'm out. Mm -hmm.